The year is 1956 and British and French troops have landed in Egypt in an effort to capture the Suez Canal and remove President Nasser from power. The events that took place are remembered in history as the Suez Crisis. Hello and welcome to The Hidden Wars. I'm your host Ashkan and today we're gonna cover the Suez Crisis which took place in 1956 in Egypt. The event marked the end of British domination in the Middle East and strengthened Arab nationalism which would encourage Arabs from all across the Middle East and North Africa to fight for their independence and self-determination. The president of Egypt at the time was a guy named Gamal Abdel Nasser. He was a young leader who took power by overthrowing Egypt's corrupt monarchy. At the time, the Kingdom of Egypt was an underdeveloped and poor nation dominated by Britain and exploited for its strategic geographic location, which included the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal is a thin stretch of water connecting the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea. More than half of the world oil trade was passing through the canal and Britain was the main beneficiary. You might ask, how Britain got to control Egypt? Well, let's find out together when we look at the history. Egypt is a land of ancient civilization and has a rich history. We can say that it is the home of one of the oldest civilizations in the world. Due to its strategic location, it was a target of many conquests throughout its history. However, the modern history of Egypt is defined most notably by the Ottoman and British empires, fighting for control of its strategic location and resources. The Ottoman Empire dominated Egypt up until the 1800s. That is when a powerful dynasty led by Muhammad Ali, not that Ali, but this Ali, just making that clear, took control of Egypt. The country was then ruled by the Muhammad Ali dynasty and in 1882 it became a British protectorate state. One of the most important parts of Egypt was the Suez Canal, where most of the oil trade was passing through. The Suez Canal Company was in control of all the shipping through the canal and it was owned by Britain and France. In addition, a large number of British troops were stationed in Egypt in order to ensure the safety of the ships passing through. Egypt was getting literally no revenue from the canal and resentment was building in the population. Even after formally declaring independence in 1922, the internal affairs of Egypt were heavily influenced by Britain. In 1936, King Farouk took power and his government was largely viewed as ineffective and corrupt. After several uprisings against the British military presence and Egypt losing the 1949 Arab-Israeli conflict, the Egyptian population was fed up with their corrupt regime and the king. A group of dissatisfied army officers formed a secret organization called the Free Officers, which was planning to overthrow the monarchy. Tensions were growing and by 1952 it became clear that King Farouk's government was incapable of exercising control over the country. That same year, the free officers felt the time was right for them to make a move and initiated the Egyptian revolution. King Farouk was overthrown in a coup and fled the country. General Naguib was declared the first president of Egypt and the country became a republic. The real leader among the officers was a young general called Gemal Abdel Nasser. I hope I pronounced it right. After disagreements with Naguib, in a short amount of time, Nasser took power for himself and became the second president of Egypt. Nasser was a charismatic young leader and he quickly managed to capture the hearts and minds of the Egyptian people. He fought to kick all foreign troops out of Egyptian lands and eventually, by 1956, all British troops left Egypt. Egypt became truly independent. He also embarked on a mission to modernize and improve the lives of ordinary Egyptians. One of his biggest infrastructure projects was building a dam on the Nile River, which came to be called the Aswan Dam. He asked for a loan from the World Bank, which was supported by US and Britain, and his loan was initially approved, and the construction started. 
Nasser also attempted to buy military equipment from the United States, but after he got refused, he eventually purchased military hardware from the Soviet Union. Meanwhile, in the face of Britain and the United States, Nasser was becoming too close to the Soviets, and they started a covert propaganda campaign to bring down his regime. British intelligence service tried to assassinate Nasser multiple times using different techniques. And As Nasser was making a public speech in Alexandria, a young man fired eight bullets at him. All missed the Premier, but two of his aides were wounded. And after all attempts failed, Britain and the United States decided to punish him by cancelling his loan for the Aswan Dam. This was a huge humiliation for Nasser, or as he puts it, I was surprised by the insultive attitude which the refusal was declared. Not by the refusal itself, but the, the insultive attitude and uh, which meant humiliation. So sad. In order to complete his project though on the Aswan Dam, he was left only with one option, to nationalize the Suez Canal and use the profits to finance it. So, in July of 1956, he delivered a speech in Alexandria and as soon as he mentioned the secret code word, Egyptian army officers seized control of the canal and the Suez Canal Company was nationalized. Britain and France were furious and immediately they figured out a plan, together with Israel, to invade and capture the Suez Canal and remove President Nasser from power. The French, the British and the Israelis signed a secret document where they outlined the plan for the invasion of Egypt. Then, in October of 1956, Israel invaded Egypt and quickly advanced through the Sinai Peninsula. Afterwards, as planned, British and French troops landed near the Suez Canal with the pretext of ensuring the safety of international trade. The Egyptian army was quickly overwhelmed, but the people rallied around Nasser and continued to fight the invaders. Cairo and other cities were bombed and hundreds of civilians lost their lives. Public opinion around the world was outraged and was in support of Egypt, as the whole world condemned the British and French invasion. The USSR, having recently sold military equipment to Egypt, threatened a nuclear warfare if Britain and France do not withdraw. Man, the world almost ended in 1956. The United States were also furious at Britain and France and even threatened to kick them out of NATO if they don't end hostilities towards Egypt. After all this enormous pressure, the Prime Minister of Britain, Anthony Eden, was finally forced to withdraw his troops from the Suez Canal. Yay! And the whole campaign ended in a disaster. The event marked the end of British domination in the Middle East and significantly damaged the reputation of Great Britain around the world. It's not like they had a very good reputation anyways. In the meantime, back in Egypt, President Nasser was viewed as a hero and he became more popular than ever. Arab nationalism was strengthened across the region and soon it was to spread to other countries outside of Egypt. Israel also withdrew its troops in the following months and the whole campaign ended with a massive victory for Egypt. The United Kingdom suffered a major defeat and Prime Minister Anthony Eden resigned soon after. The event marked the end of British domination in the Middle East and paved the way for a new great power like the United States to take its place. It also showed that Britain can no longer pursue its own independent foreign policy without first consulting with the Americans. French reputation was also damaged while Israel proved that it has a strong army and that it can defend itself from any aggression from its neighbors. On the other hand, for President Nasser in Egypt, the Suez Crisis proved to be a gigantic victory. He emerged as the great hero of the Arab world who stood up against the British and French empires. His popularity soared and he became a unifying figure across the whole Middle East. He would go on to rule Egypt until his death in 1970. The whole campaign showed 
how a small country like Egypt managed to defend its independence and fought back against colonial powers. It led the world almost to the brink of nuclear catastrophe and firmly established the United States and the Soviet Union as the two sole superpowers of the time. This was our coverage of the Suez Crisis of 1956. If you like our video, hit that subscribe button and support our channel. See you next time with more videos from the Hidden Wars.